welcome to Zion Teachers Series. Today's teacher is Dr. Brian J. Bailey. Dr. Bailey is an international prophet and Bible teacher and a prolific, prolific author of 40 books. These books have been translated into about 25 languages. In his 50-year ministry, he has traveled to over 100 countries, ministering in churches, conventions, pastors, seminars, television, and radio. Dr. Bailey is currently president of Zion Fellowship International and the senior pastor of Zion Chapel, both of which are located in Glory Hill um, in Waverley, New York. He is also president of Zion, Univers president of Zion University and Zion Ministerial Institute, which is Bible schools in over 30 countries around the world. Today's topic is on the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms brings comfort, encouragement, direction, and courage to believers from all walks of life. Join with us now as we open our hearts to what the Lord has to say from the book of Psalms. Welcome to our selection from the Psalms. And we're looking at, in this session, at Psalm 103. What a glorious psalm this is. I suppose in one sense, all psalms bring hope, and comfort to our soul but I think some shine forth as brighter stars than others and I think that's true of Psalm 103 you know the psalmist you know is full of triumph and of course the psalmist is King David and he's just filled with joy and he say, he starts off this psalm by blessing the Lord and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And uh, he, he starts the psalm with this beautiful attitude of blessing God, thanking God, praising God for all that God has done for King David. And so we're going to see some of these benefits that... Um, King David has received from God. And remember this, that David is a type of Christ. And uh, therefore, David, in a sense, experienced the joys of Christ. And we, as Christians, may enter into these very joys too. So I want you to realize this, that although we are looking at a great saint of God, a wonderful man, a man who loved God with all his heart. You know, we mustn't look upon him as something that uh, is way higher than us and that we can never attain unto the experiences of King David. No, these things of which he speaks are available to us and we can attain unto them. We can all bless the Lord. We can all rejoice in the Lord. But look how it continues. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. You know, we have a, a hymn in the Christian church. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And what a beautiful thing it is, you know, to sit in a chair or kneel beside your bed or, and just meditate and think, oh God, how good you've been to me. And look around and see others, you know, who have missed the blessing of God, either because they haven't given their heart to the Lord or because they're not walking upright before the Lord. But, you know, often... At my age of 80, I, I look back at times and uh, I see, you know, others who have turned aside from the ways of God and, you know, ended their lives in misery and so forth. And yet here I am, I in very good health and uh, I, I just feel full of the joy of the Lord. And I look back and... I think of all the way that God has led me and uh, all the things that he's permitted me to do 
to travel to I don't know how many countries of the world. I travel to at least 12 each year and have the privilege of ministering to so many people but also to have the promises and the knowledge of God's word and the presence of God. You know, I, I thank God for that. My dear wife, who's now gone to be with the Lord, you know, there have been visions of her in heaven and, you know, what a glorious place she has there because she was such a wonderful Christian. You see, and I think of all these things and I think of all these benefits. And that is what King David did, you see. He said, forget not all his benefits. You know, just reflect what God has done for you and you know it gives you such a joy it gives you such a thankfulness you'll feel so good as contemplating what God has done for you well he now lists what God has done for him and he says who forgiveth all thine iniquities forgiveth all thine iniquities now I've said that King David was a very wonderful man of God, and of course he was. But we should also contemplate on the fact that King David fell down into a deep pit of adultery and murder. And God restored him. And so when he says, Forgiveth all thine iniquities, in another psalm he had said, Mine iniquities are more than the hairs of my head. And yet, in this psalm, he said, every one of those iniquities is forgiven. And I want you to experience that. You know, the prophet Micah, contemplating the goodness of God, rejoices and says, he hath cast all my iniquities, all my sins behind him. Well, God is very wonderful. But God has made us like us, and we have two eyes in the front. In other words, we can't see that which is behind him. And Micah was just rejoicing and rejoicing in the Lord and saying, Oh, he's cast all my iniquities, all my sins behind him. And uh, King David said, He hath forgiven every one of mine iniquities. And you know, with God... Is what is the thought of forgiveness? Well, I won't count it against you. But it's more than that. You see, forgiveness is rooted in forgetfulness. And this was very true for a friend of mine who regretfully had fallen into a moral indiscretion, shall I say, when it was sin. And he would pray to God every morning for at least six weeks or oh God forgive me and then after six weeks he heard an audible voice and God said for what <laughs> it was so real my friend turned he was on his knees he turned he said you know for what and God said when you asked me to forgive you I not only forgave you I forgot now you do too so you see this thought of um you know, who forgiveth all thine iniquities means it's washed out. You know, I had the privilege of actually physically dying, going to heaven, and standing, as it were, before the judgment throne of God. And, you know, it was as though to my left there was a whole of my life in little pictures. And some were completely blank. I didn't know why. Well, the Spirit of God said, well, that's what something you did wrong, and God forgave you. He said, there's no record. You don't know for what. You see, so I want you to see this, that God can forgive all our iniquities. And um, may I linger a little bit about all thine iniquities? Because, you see, in India, there was a certain man who had committed many, many sins. And in fact, he had committed murder, for which he was sentenced to death. 
And in his cell, in his death cell, he prayed. And he had been witnessed to by Christians, but he had ignored their testimonies. But now in his cell, all those testimonies came back to him. And he cried out to God, Oh God, would you forgive me? And he felt the presence of the Lord come into that cell. And he felt as though he was washed from all those terrible sins that he had committed. And then God said, on such a day, you will be freed. Now this seemed to be an impossibility, but it burnt within his heart. There, the day, the date, God said, you'll be released. And all oh, such hope came up within his heart. And through a judicial decision, unexplicable, the judges of the Supreme Court released him. Well, he was so thankful. And I suppose you can gather what happened afterwards. Well, he gave his heart completely to the Lord, to the service of the Lord, and today he's a very notable pastor in the land of India. I just want to encourage you because I feel that some who are listening to me have fallen into terrible iniquities. But here is a God who can forgive and forget and restore. Well, we move on. And what do we read? Who healeth all thy diseases. Well now, the thing is this, if we believe that God can forgive all our iniquities, can we not also believe that he can heal all our diseases? All our diseases. You know, I go to many countries and I don't know, I pass through many situations, have to eat many kinds of food. Not the hygiene that one has here in the United States. Sometimes I feel sick and so forth, but I pray and God heals me. Who healeth all thy diseases. You ask me what disease I, I don't know. I don't know. When I get sick, I pray. And God heals me. Well, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Redeemeth thy life from destruction. Oh, how many young people in our society today have gone astray and are in all kinds of gangs and the like. And you know, I know of people, young people who have been in gangs, committed all kinds of sins, iniquities, wickedness, and you know, I know of God who has reached down to them and plucked them up out of those gangs and made them ministers of God. I'm thinking of one person who actually was a minister and he fell into moral indiscretions and went away from his family and a wife who was willing to forgive and ended up actually on the streets of Los Angeles and was there for many years and then you know somehow his heart was turned he cried out oh God restore me do you know that very night an angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep and said go home and somehow something came within his spirit. A strength. Yes. I'm going home. I'm going to face my family. And ask their forgiveness. He did. His wife, his loving wife was there. Embraced him. His children loved him. Hugged him. And he was not only restored to his family. But you know he was actually restored to the ministry. In his old age, he was still preaching the gospel of Christ. 
So you see who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness. You see, that's a beauty. You know, the Lord not only lifts us up, but he blesses us too. You know, King David experienced that. He said, you know, thou lifted me up out of a horrible pit and put my feet upon a rock and then gave me a new song. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Oh yes, God did that for King David. God can do that for you too. You see, you must not put David on another pedestal. What he experienced, you can experience too. And so, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, it's wonderful to feel the strength of the Lord coming into you. You know, at times, have to travel very long distances and seemingly in very difficult circumstances when I get to certain situations but oh God your strength sustains me I actually feel the strength of the Lord coming into me I feel good you see and uh, you know his strength can sustain you. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Our own strength would fail. Our own strength is negligible when it comes to some of the burdens that we have to carry and face. But oh, how wonderful it is when that strength of the Lord comes into us and you know what happens? We feel new. We feel vibrant. Oh, it's so wonderful what God can do. Well, we move on. You know, and uh, the Lord executes righteousness, judgment for all that are oppressed. You know, sometimes we have people who do rise up against us, sometimes regretfully. You know, it can be in our own home. You know, some wives oppressed by husbands, unfortunately. And yet, if you will keep a clean heart, don't murmur, don't become bitter. But trust in the Lord. The Lord will give you strength and sustain you and even change the heart of your husband. My heart really goes out to wives in situations that I would not desire to be in. But I've seen congregations filled with abused wives, filled with wives that have been oppressed, ridiculed by their husbands. But you know, I can give you hope. You know, the Lord will plead for you and change your circumstances. And then it says, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You know, going through the wilderness, the children of Israel saw the mighty acts of God. They saw the Red Sea open. They saw the cloud come down on Mount Sinai. They saw the fire. They felt the mountain tremble. They saw many extraordinary things in that wilderness but their leader Moses understood what was happening and he knew the ways of God and here again I want to say to you that um, in the Psalm 77 and verse 13 it says thy ways O God are in the sanctuary we want to come to a higher level not just to observe what God is doing, but to know and understand his ways. And as we come into the very presence of the Lord, we can understand his ways. And, you know, the psalmist says in uh, Psalm uh, 73 and verse 17, 
when he was contemplating the enemy. He marveled that the enemy could thrive for such a long time and seemingly triumph. And then when he went in to the tabernacle, into the presence of God, he saw something that changed the whole of his mind. And it was simply was this, that he saw their end. He saw their end. I have seen the end of many people who have turned into wickedness. And I just want to say in this time in which we're living, the time of terror, you know, the terrorists, these Muslim terrorists and so forth, I want to say this, that there's something that does not belong to us, and that is vengeance. God hath reserved that for himself. He said, vengeance belongeth to me, I will repay. You know, being a Londoner and seeing London, you know, attacked by the terrorists, you know, you have a feeling, well, you'd like to do something about it. God spoke to me, he said, look, vengeance belongeth to me. But then he added, I will repay. So I'm very confident, not only that all the terrorists will eventually be captured, but God will take vengeance on them. I will repay, God says. And their end is going to be terrible. Have you ever thought what happens to these suicide bombers? You know, they blow themselves up, but they blow other people up. Do they really understand what happens after death? That all those people, don't forget, they kill the body, but not the soul. And uh, all those people are going to come against them. You killed me. You did this to me. You did that to me. Oh, these suicide bombers don't realize what they're in for. Well, we continue. Judgment is God's. If we know the ways of God, he gives us such peace. And then, you know, King David switches to contemplate the beauty of Jesus by saying, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Plenteous in mercy. And then he starts contemplating the mercy of God to those that love him. And uh, he said, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward him that fear him. You know, when we have that truly reverential fear of God and realize that we're in the hands of God and God can do whatsoever he wants to do in our life and we tremble before God and say, Oh God, please keep me. Please preserve me from evil. Please preserve me from turning to the right or turning to the left so that, oh God, I can give you pleasure. You know, that's the thing I want because I shall soon see the Lord face to face before his judgment throne. And you know, the one thing I want is that when he sees me, he will look at me as one who has given him pleasure. I've been very conscious of the heartbreaks in the heart of the Lord himself. Because, after all, he has given his all for us. He has redeemed us by his blood. And what have we done for him? You know, I have seen, you know, in vision form, some people stand before God. They have wasted their lives. He had given them such potentiality. He had given them such blessings. But they had squandered that on themselves. Or else they had treated those things lightly. They turned to the right. They turned to the left. They turned away from God's highest and accepted a far lower place. And I've seen these people in vision stand before the Lord. Not only are they filled with shame because of their wasted days upon earth, but I've seen the Lord look at them and his head fall. And all oh, such sadness 
Zoe's heart was breaking. You could have done so much better. But look what you did in your life. His heart is broken, you know, because they were ordained to give him pleasure. But they gave him nothing but sadness. Well, we don't want to be like that. Say, God in mercy. Lord, keep me so that my days on earth shall please you. And when I see you, I shall be like you. Well, we continue. And here a beautiful thought in verse 13. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. And that word pity is almost, it could be used as a, a word that means stroke. You know, a father loves his son and loves to touch him, loves to pat him, you know, loves to hold him. He gets that satisfaction from it. You know, I had a vision in heaven many years ago, seeing the back of the father, not his front, but the back of the father. And around him, there were so many children, you know, who had died young and were in heaven. And these little children, you know, just came to him. They loved him. And he, the father, got such pleasure in touching them and patting them. He wants to do that with us, to touch us. Sometimes you feel the arms of the Lord around you. And uh, there you are. That's the relationship that he wants to have with each one of us. And so, as we come to a close now, you know, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children. Oh, that we leave an inheritance to either our spiritual children or our natural children that the righteousness that we have received from God because we've hungered and thirst of it can indeed be transmitted as an inheritance to our children's children. You know, what you have, you can pass on. Well, we must close now. And I just want to say this that his mercy is to all those that keep his commandments and to those that remember his commandments to do them. And so, may I encourage you. You know, in the tabernacle of Moses, there is the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark is the commandments. Above it, there is the mercy seat. And as we do his commandments, we shall just rejoice in the mercy of God and remember meditate on this fact forget not all his benefits to us for they will just flow to us as we obey his commandments God bless you